The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, thank you for joining us here. A few people, it looks like, are still joining, but uh, we are going to go ahead and get started. We just have 30 minutes set for this, so I don't want to delay getting started and leave some room at the end here for some uh, questions, should there be some. All right, so this webinar today is about the Scanforce Manufacturing Solutions. Let me make sure my slides advance here. All right, uh, my name is Steve Showalter. I am a partner and uh, director of sales here at Scanforce, and I'm gonna be presenting here today for you guys. Quick rundown of the agenda. So we're gonna go through a Scanforce introduction. For those of you that are attending today that maybe don't know who we are, maybe have just simply heard of us, but don't know much about us, we're gonna get into that pretty quickly there. We're also gonna review all of the solutions that we provide. Uh, again, the focus is on manufacturing today, but we're gonna to touch on everything else that we do as well. Um, the focus again is the manufacturing suite we offer, so we're gonna cover that. We're gonna to touch on some of the highlights of the production management module itself. And then we're gonna show you guys a demo, walk you guys through our, our solutions here today. And obviously, as I already mentioned, we'll leave it open here at the end for some uh, questions and uh, the answers we'll have for you guys. So getting into the introduction of Scanforce, so, so who are we? Um, so we're a company that develops mobile applications and our mobile applications run on all different types of devices, Android, iOS. Um, mostly we're dealing with devices that are designed to be used in a shop floor or warehouse environment. Uh, we've been doing this for a long time and uh, our expertise is in streamlining processes. So it's not only just the easy to use uh, solutions on the mobile device that does, do center around inventory control, um, but it's just the streamlining of processes. Uh, so we do a lot of that as far as our software we offer, but also walking through the process to make sure it's a good fit for uh, companies that are using it, uh, which is that last point there. You know, Our priority is providing the right solution uh, and supporting that, uh, making sure that we provide you the proper services uh, should you have questions or, or issues that arise. Uh, hitting really quickly on the history, of our company. So we've been around for a while too. Uh, we've been around since 1992. The first version of Scanforce uh, was actually developed in 1998 out of a failed implementation of another uh, solution in the market that uh, they were unable to fix. So we kind of had to jump in and do that. And then in 2007, we brought it to the masses, so to speak. Uh, this time we have about 22 employees and we have locations all across the country. Um, our install base is, I'm sure this is out of date already. Uh, we have over 810 uh, installs that we've done. And, the users are uh, 8,400 plus. Uh, one of the things that we did with our solution, and I'll hit on this when we do the demo portion of it, is we perfected a solution that works whether you're connected or disconnected. Um, one of the big things that we hit on is a real-time solution so that you're seeing data from your ERP system in real time and then what you're capturing on those devices, getting that information into your system in real time. However, to have a truly mobile solution, yeah, it's easy to be connected in most environments today, but sometimes you are disconnected. Your network is down, you walk into a dead spot, whatever the case may be. Scanforce solutions are designed to function whether you're connected or disconnected and provide you with data lookups and data validations should you be disconnected. It's actually native on the devices I mentioned earlier, iOS devices, Android, and even Windows devices. And then there's that seamless integration into ERP uh, systems. Um, the next thing I'm gonna jump over to the notable customers. We do have some customers listed there that are simply using our mobile platform. Um, but what we've done is create that seamless integration in ERP system. So it's a plug and play. And one of the biggest things is an easy to use solution. I'll touch on that in a little bit here as well. Notable customers, just listing out there a few that you may have heard of, maybe not. Um, but these are customers utilizing our mobile platform and our solutions uh, for the Sage environment. Now, touching on what Scanforce offers. Again, we're gonna to touch on manufacturing today or focus on that, um, but we do have a WMS uh, offering. Uh, we have three versions of that, from fundamentals up to premium. Fundamentals would hit some of the basic transactions, you know, receiving purchase orders, shipping sales orders, counting, transferring, and things of that nature. As you get into the different versions of our WMS solution, we start adding things like um, automatic posting of transactions, uh, dashboards with transaction histories as well. So you can see who does, uh, who's done what, uh, and what device they're on, time, date, stamps, et cetera. And then all the way up to our premium solution that includes the seamless integration to the DSD ScanForce multi-bin. And one of the highlights of that solution would be leveraging automatic allocations of uh, items from specific bins. That allows you to do some pretty fancy directed picking 
um, and reservation of items from particular bins at different points, be it when you create orders to when you receive in uh, purchase orders, and then those items need to be available for sales orders, and all this goes on with that. Moving down in this list here, or this display, label printing. So we have label printing solutions. This day and age, a lot of people have items coming in with barcodes, um, but maybe they don't have as much information as you want on the barcode. An example would be, I wanna put my item number, my lot number, maybe an expiration date in there, um, and quantity all into one barcode. We can do things like that. And those can be triggered right from within the mobile programs, be it at receiving, making something, or if you need to print off a label for a customer specific uh, request at shipping, it, it's all tied in right there. You also have the ability to print from within Sage as well. So it's not just restricted to the uh, uh, mobile programs. Moving on, mobile sales. So this is commonly used in obviously people out in the field selling, but also trade shows and even counter sales. So right from a mobile device, be it a, a scanner, smartphone, or even a tablet, or you could lo load it on a PC, you can do things like create sales orders, uh, invoices, quotes, credit memos, and the screens are extremely um, easy to navigate. They're very concise in terms of what it's asking for. Um, there's also options to make it a little more complex, but the idea is, is obviously on a mobile device, or if you do have it set up in a counter sales environment, you're not occupying a Sage license to allow people to quickly and easily place uh, orders in the system. Uh, whether you're mobile or, or connected at a countertop, you can print or email orders or the invoices. Um, one of the things, a highlight of that is also a catalog view. So if you have images stored in your Sage system for inventory, uh, you can select items to place on the order from a catalog view. Um, there is some credit card processing options and even a signature capture. So you can have people sign off on these and that signature follows all the way through from if you're creating an order within mobile sales, that'll follow all the way through to invoicing. Or obviously if you're doing invoicing for mobile sales, it's right there as well. Now we're gonna get into this today, so I'm not gonna go through the details here, but just listing out manufacturing. Scanforce offers an option to go ahead and automate fill of materials. Uh, we have a make to order solution I'm gonna show you guys today here. Uh, our production management automation suite, and then we do still support legacy work order customers. Uh, so we do still have a solution for that. One of the things that, that we pride ourselves on is really what sets us apart from other solutions in the market. Um, I don't wanna discount the technology as far as just creating a solution, but it's not that big of a, a stretch to create a solution out there that does some of this automation, but it's kind of how you go about it, how the solution's set up from a technical standpoint, for, let's start with. Uh, that touches on speed. Um, a few years back, actually, we did this uh, particular uh, challenge. We called it the million record challenge, and we loaded a million records into our Sage system. It took forever. Got all those records in there then. Set it up so that ScanForce was integrated with it then. And when you go ahead and scan or look something up within ScanForce, the return rate that we got, so that's when you scan something, it's uh, less than three one hundredths of a second that you're getting that registration back. I guess this is a valid item. Um, may not sound that important, but we have witnessed in, in person other solutions that when you make a, a, a data entry uh, record by scanning it, keying it in, what have you, it takes multiple seconds actually for that to register, did, was that the correct item or not? That can really slow you down in a warehouse. If you're picking, for example, a sales order um, or grabbing items to record a material issue and it takes more than uh, you know a half a second or whatever to go ahead and grab that data, it's gonna slow you down. So ScanForce is one of those things we work on is how fast do our solutions work? The other side of this is, is designing a mobile application that is easy to use. We have it here uh, in the text here. What do I do next? You never wanna have somebody out on the shop floor or in your warehouse looking at a screen and saying to themselves, well, what am I supposed to do next? It has to be easy to use and intuitive. And the biggest thing here, I could probably go on for quite a while about our support department. Um, we have a full team that is very well trained in-house all the way from just your front end support all the way up to our development teams are in-house. We don't farm things out. It makes us extremely responsive um, knowledgeable and agile. So if we do need to do something as far as a change, make a custom programming request happen, we can do that very quickly. And that's really the backbone of our company. Now touching on in a little more detail, what I had listed previously on the manufacturing offerings, we do have a solution for bill of materials, production entry. I really wish they'd call that assembly entry or something like that because it really ties more to people that are doing assembly. We also have production management. We have two versions of that. I'm gonna be focusing on the full version today, but there's also a lighter version that we can go into more detail offline if anybody has questions about. I referenced it and I'm gonna show you our make to order solution. We'll get into more details as far as what that is. We have the ScanForce labor management console. And then as I mentioned, we do still support work order. 
I mentioned earlier some customers of ours, maybe you didn't recognize them by name, but I wanted to kind of put out here some uh, products that are actually made uh, leveraging ScanForce uh, barcoding for manufacturing. Um, some of these you may not recognize, uh, but again, there's pasta companies out there, there's water companies, ocean spray cranberries, uh, and, and then there's, if you're from the Ohio area, you might know the Skyline Chili there. Um, it is, I think, uh, distributed uh, nationwide, but these are just a few of the products that are actually made. So the first thing I'll touch on here is bill of materials. I won't spend a ton of time with this. Uh, as I referenced a minute ago, this is more designed for somebody just doing general assembly. So you're just making products. So you can capture from a mobile device or PC, back flushing components out, meaning, hey, I indicate on the device or within our application, what am I making, how many, and then it back flushes all the components, or from within the scan for solution, it can prompt you through the components. All right, I'm making 10 of these, now go get 10 of this component, 20 of that component, and so on. We have some enhancements for this also. If you want to stage items, um, you can go ahead and this a lot of times happens even with multi uh where items are in multiple locations. I'm gonna go grab all of these components and put them into a uh, either a warehouse or a bin location that might be called production. Um, that works just like picking a sales order in the sense where I'm gonna go make, as my example a second ago was, 10 of this item. It'll then tell me what items to go get for that and then do that transfer. So then I can go ahead and do my production entry very quickly. The other one we have is adjusting your final output. So some of our customers, they don't know what the final quantity is going to be, but they want to record. Again, I'm making 10 of these. Well, maybe only nine came out then, so I need to adjust that. And so you can do that before you send your information back over to Sage. Work order automation, just going to touch on this. Uh, material issues, completions, and labor. We support all of those, whether you have a multi min environment or not. And one of the things we also do is include the ability to automatically release a work order. That's something that I'll use air quotes since it was fixed with production management. Um, it, it didn't work that way for work order. We, we fixed that ourselves. Um, now, touching on production management uh, automation, a lot of the same things that I just mentioned for work order. Do material issues, completions, and then labor, be it through time clock or an actual data entry of, I'm entering in how long I work on a work ticket. Real quickly here, for those of you that maybe are new to the manufacturing side of Sage 100 here, um, and maybe you're looking at it as build materials right or production management. Production management, it's a module in your Sage 100 system. Uh, it is the replacement for that work order uh, module that I've referenced as legacy a few different times here. And it really allows you to do a multi-step production and tie it to a work ticket. So uh, how's it different than bill of materials? So bill of materials, it's a one-step production. Like I said, it's more of like an assembly. Um, you can tell the solution, what you want to make, how many, and then obviously the components, as I described earlier, and then boom, you're done. That's it. You just, you made it, and then that's how many you made. Um, the finished product goes right in inventory, and those components, be it back flushed or whether you're prompt through them, they come out of inventory. Production management is, I think of it as more of a sophisticated production that you're doing. So you have a work ticket that everything is tied back to. You track what's needed, you can plan ahead, and then you release that when you're ready unless you're leveraging the fact that you just want to have it automatically released. You're able to use the components then before you actually record that that finished product is in inventory. So that's another big distinction between bill of materials and production management. That's the material issues that I'll show you here in a little bit. You also can now track labor against what you're making from individual employees or crew, um, and it just allows for better cost tracking. And then that last step, there would be a completion. Now, for those of you who might be using this already, you're looking at this and going, I don't have to do all those things in that order. No, you don't. For those of you that aren't familiar with this, you can do things like a completion and have a back flush material issues if you're only concerned about uh, recording finished products. So it can still work in that similar manner to bill of materials. There are some options there. It allows you to be flexible. Am I making this for inventory against the sales order or am I producing something because another work ticket needs it as a sub -assembly? You can track the step numbers for this as well. That's again, that multi-step production. So each step can require, uh, require different materials. Um, and this is just a screenshot then of showing there are different uh, work centers there as well and different items that are listed out. There's also, I mentioned it a minute ago, back flushing. So you can auto issue materials and labor. So if I'm just capturing uh, completions then it'll back flush all these uh, components out of here. And this is just a screenshot of Sage. Uh, for those of you that maybe aren't familiar, the screenshot I just showed and this one is from my Sage system within uh, production management. Examples would be if you're doing things like building a computer, any any type of a complicated item there. So you can issue out parts uh, once they've been taken out of the box and installed, tracking labor. Um, and then you can actually do this again through multiple steps and multiple people. Completion doesn't happen until that computer is actually assembled. Again, contrasting against bill of materials where 
Build materials just says you made it, it's done. This is just a screenshot of what you're gonna see here in a minute. Uh, what we're gonna focus on are the three components here of material issues, completions, and labor tracking. And really just wanna to touch on some whys, I guess, if you will. So what are the pain points uh, solved by this? Just gives you that flexibility that I mentioned earlier. Gives you more access too. It doesn't require additional Sage licenses. This It opens up users to uh, you know, capture the data. And that ties into what I was talking about on that mobile sales side of things. Leveraging a solution like ours, just gives you the uh, ability to have more people capturing those transactions and doing so right at the point that they're touching the items too. You have real-time tracking. So as you actually issue these components out um, through the material issues, you see that real time. So you don't have to, when you're looking at your availability of products and what I need to order, you know that that's one accurate because of the way you're capturing the data through ScanForce, but also it's happening instantly. So you know it's up to date. And that ties into just efficiency and accuracies. Um, you're not having to write things down. Well, you better hope they write it down correctly um, and legibly, and then you don't have to worry about people uh, making keystroke errors and just the time it takes to go ahead and write something down and pass it back for data entry. I did want to touch on, before we get into the demo here, another module in Sage. We've done previous webinars on this. If you're interested in additional details, let us know. We can send you the link to that. But it's the IRP module. Um, this is often overlooked, and really it fills some gaps that Work Order had that there used to be a solution called work order efficiency package out there that really bridged those gaps. A lot of that's done here in inventory requirements planning, IRP. Um, it's a module in Sage, and what it does is designed to tell you what you have to make or what you need to order. Uh, so what it's doing is it's looking at information from sales orders, work tickets that are created, and even reorder points for inventory. And it tells you then, all right, you need to now either make this or now you need to order this. Um, and it's based again on the data pulled from sales orders, work tickets, and those reorder points. Uh, there's four aspects of this. So you can have items auto issued to a work ticket as soon as you receive it in. Uh, you can do things um, looking at the pro production board and purchase board uh, where you can see what items need to be moved. So instead of saying, hey, I wanna make this item, if I have the option to buy that item, then I can move that over from saying I need to make it to, hey, I wanna buy this and now create the purchase order. Um, We've had customers that leverage that in the sense of, I don't have time to even make this. I need to get this in quickly. And you can do things like put an item on hold, and it won't take those into account when you're looking at creating those work tickets or POs. So if you haven't looked at that, uh, I would encourage you to. If you looked at it once, I would encourage you to look at it again, especially because now with version 2022 for Sage, uh, IRP has been brought up to date with that. All right, now let's get into probably why everybody's actually here. Let's actually see some software here. So. I have my Sage system set up here, and I mentioned um, earlier that I'm gonna touch on our make to order. I'm gonna start there as far as the demo is concerned. So touching on what is make to order, really in the most generic terms, it's a link from sales order entry over to production management work ticket creation. It's a shortcut. It allows you to write from sales order, create these work tickets. Now I'm gonna click on sales order here and go into uh, sales order options. And it's pulling it up on a different screen. Let me pull it up here for you guys. So here's where on the bottom, hopefully you guys can see where my mouse is here, work ticket integration. So this is what's added into your sales order options related to the ScanForce make to order. So first off, you have your integration method. Now I have mine set to prompt, which will make sense here in a minute. It can be automatic or manual. And this is related to um, creating the work ticket. So do you want it to prompt you and ask you for it? Do you want it to automatically do it? Or do you want to do nothing until you click a button that says I want to create that? There's an option to create a, a copy from Bill of Materials or template. Default work ticket uh, class, that's something that can be set here as well. And then the status. I always have mine set to uh, create it as released, but if you want to review those and your process is to manually release these, you can go ahead and control how you want this to create the work ticket. I like mine also to open the work ticket after creation, but that's an option. If you don't want the people in order entry to have to open that up and say accept or anything like that, then just don't have it open. It'll create the work ticket and you're set. And there's default work ticket class from the template step too. So I have that unchecked, um, but these are the options within sales order. I'm not gonna show you this part, um, but there's another aspect to this. You do have to indicate back in item maintenance that an item is set for make to order. So those are some of the setup options there. Now let's go in and actually create a sales order here. Pull it on the screen you guys can see. We will go ahead and pull up a customer. Let's just grab Dan's TV repair. Looks like Dan doesn't pay his bills, but we'll ignore that credit limit. So, all right, we're good there. All right, so here's our sales order. Let's go into lines. Let me just simply grab an item here. 
My favorite item is this Turbo Desktop. Where is it? Oh, I scrolled right past it. And I know this because I have this set for uh, a may, as a make to order item. So I want to grab one here. Here we go. Let's just grab this one here. Uh, let's say we need to order 10 of them. All right, we're going to tab through. And again, I have mine set to prompt. So it's going to go ahead and as I go through here, first thing it does is it's leveraging the options that I have set for this item. So let's just go ahead and pull these up. They are very dated as far as the examples. But we're just going to go ahead and select the first one. But again, this is tied back into standard functionality within production management as far as the options for bill of materials. So we'll say OK to these. Now, on my other screen, I'll pull this over. This is that prompt. It says, do you want to create the work ticket for this item? Well, yes, I do. So I'm going to go ahead and say create that. And since I have it pulling up the work ticket, now this popped up here as well. So here's the work ticket that was created. And it references back to the sales order that we actually are creating here. Show these both on both screens here. And, and this is the creation of the work ticket. So if you do have people training where they can make changes to this or they need to review anything here, it's right there in front of them. Again, that shortcut, boom, right to work ticket creation. Now I'm just going to hit accept here, close that out. And now I'm going to go ahead and accept my order. And I'm going to go ahead and close this out. Now I will pull up really quickly here the work ticket to show you that that sales order number now is referenced in the work ticket here as well. So let's go ahead and pull up the one we just did. And whoops. Let's go here and you'll see here's the sales order number so again everything's tied together from the work ticket creation and everything like that now that's the creation of the work ticket let's pull up the mobile side of things now this is an emulation of what the app looks like when you're running this on a mobile device we do have people running this on a pc you can navigate like i'm going to with my mouse here um, you can run this on a stationary tablet again the device uh side of this is very flexible whatever is the best fit for you guys for anybody not familiar with ScanForce, this is our main login screen. So this is how and where we control things like permissions, as well as the traceability of who did what on the mobile devices. It can be password protected, so people can go ahead and share these devices. You don't have to worry about somebody logging in with someone else's permissions. And it supports multiple companies. Now, I don't have a password set, so I'm gonna hit accept. Our main menu is set here, so you have everything. I have our WMS set up on this as well. So I have things like inventory transactions, utilities and order processing. For the webinar, we're going to focus on manufacturing. So nested under manufacturing, I have my bill of materials transactions. Okay, we're not going to get into those today. But I also then have my uh, production management uh, transactions. Now, if you're not using bill of materials as far as our automation side of things, you're not going to see these things. So the mobile uh, uh, menu here is also set up to be uh, uh, controlled by permissions here as well. Now, let's just do the first one down the line here. Let's say you're doing material issues. So I'm going to do that. The first thing the solution wants to know is, well, what work ticket are you going to go ahead and, and uh, work on here? Now, one thing you can do is print off work tickets with the work ticket number and even the step barcoded into one barcode. So you simply scan that, and it'll go ahead and prompt you, or it'll take you right past uh, the prompts for those. I'm going to do a lookup. Looks up real time instantly back into my Sage system. So here's the work ticket we just created. This is where it grabs the data for that. And that's that aspect of ScanForce where if I do lose connectivity, I have all the information I need to complete my material issue, even if I'm disconnected, giving me data validation and data lookups. Now, you'll see here is prompting for the step. Um, as I mentioned, if that's barcoded, it won't prompt you for that. I'll go right past it. Let's check uh, or select here step 10. And now it wants to know the items I'm going to go ahead and, and use. Now, if you scan or key something in that's not on this, it's going to validate that for you instantly. Again, connected or disconnected. You also have the ability to do a look up here. So these are the items that are tied to that particular step. So let's just go ahead and grab uh, the first one here. Let's grab this form and accept. Actually, I'm gonna pick a different item because it only is in one particular bin. I want you guys uh, to see some of the options as it relates to uh, the multi-min aspect of this. So what it does is it reads real time to say, all right, well, what location are you pulling this from? If you are doing this without multi-min, it's not gonna ask you anything about bids. Um, but with multi-bin, I have the option to uh, select what bin I want to take this out of. So let's just select our bin, indicate our quantity, continue on. You can keep on doing material issues. When we push the data back over to our, our Sage system, it's going to show me I have two unresolved lines because there are two items I could have still issued out that I didn't. And it'll alert me to that as well, but that's fine. I only did the material issue for that one item, send it over. It's going to create that uh, transaction back in my Sage system. Also, if you're going to do a completion, let's go ahead and grab that same work ticket here. And let's record uh, what location we're going to receive into, or I'm sorry, well, not receive, produce into. Um, so I've selected bin. Now, some options here, maybe a complete bin is what you have it set. 
for. So maybe you want to go ahead and, and track everything that's complete and then do a, a secondary transfer to move things out. Or you can put it directly into a location out on the shelves. And then you simply indicate, let's say we just made one, send my data over, and it's going to record that completion. Now, I mentioned this earlier, I'll reiterate it. If you go ahead and are using backflushing of material issues and components, then you could simply just do a, a completion there, and it's just going to go ahead and backflush all those components out. Now, you can also have this automatically post, so that's completely real time. Um, I have mindset to go into a batch just to show you guys how the import works. It instantly goes in here. We'll grab our ScanForce batch, and here are our transactions we just did. So we have that material issues and those completions that are there. Again, you can review the transactions and post if you want, or again, you can auto post these transactions. All right, so I must be a little more long-winded than I thought, so let's jump right into run out of time here. Let's jump right into the uh, labor management side of this thing. So I'm gonna pull up, this is our, our management console. And what I'm on right now is our labor tracking. So I previously logged in with two people here using our time clock. So I'm gonna pull up the mobile device here and keep the screen up as well. Um, there is again, um, labor tracking that you simply just enter the time that you worked on something. So if you don't wanna do a clock in, clock out, that's what you would use. I'm gonna go ahead and use the time clock then to clock one of these people out. So I'm gonna launch this and we'll go ahead and look at the employee here. So let's go ahead and grab uh, employee. Let's look, let's say we're Sharon and we're gonna go ahead and clock out. So you could scan this, I'm selecting from the lookup. And what work ticket are we working on? So this is the one that ends in 35. So I, if, if I were to select um, a different work ticket, one that this person is not already logged into, it would automatically know that I'm clocking into it. And you can allow people to clock into multiples at one time if you want to. Now, this knows that this is the one I'm working on. So what step? So I could even be working on multiple steps. So we're gonna go ahead and accept that. It knows that Sharon's already clocked in. So we need to go ahead and clock out now. And then I'll do a refresh here. And you'll see it automatically clocks her out. Now, one important part of this is, is that I can manage this data now as a manager. I can go in and, and adjust information if I need to prior to sending it back to my Sage system. You could opt to have it go back to Sage real time, auto post, et cetera, or you could manage it within the labor management console. Now, let's say I reviewed this and I think this is good. I could go ahead and select all of them if I want to, and then I can submit my selected. And now that's gonna go back and create that transaction back in my Sage system uh, as a labor entry. So back over here, really quick to get in here, pull up our labor entry. And I can't get the pull up on the right screen. So it goes back into to, uh, labor entry and also it can go into the transaction entry as well. So however you're handling labor. All right, so I wanna open it up now for some questions and answers. I know we're running low on time here, um, but that was what we wanted to cover for you guys. The overview of ScanForce, what our offerings are. Everything is compatible with version 2022. Has been within weeks of the announcement and the release of version 2022. Um, Part of that is obviously Sage taking over the code of production management, which is great news to everybody in the development world. Um, it's gonna to continue to open doors for us to continue to expand our, our manufacturing offerings as well. So, all right, uh, Darcy, I'm gonna open it up if you see any questions that have come through. I do, the first one is, has IRP been released? Yes, to the best of our knowledge, we, we've uh, it's been released for version 2022, and that was one of the big things with that update to version 2022. Okay, does the auto post feature integrate with Paperless Office? Uh, yes, it does. So if you're using Paperless Office, then that would operate normally as it would as though you were doing a manual update of the transactions or posting the transactions. All right, we've got three more so far. Can the template slash bill of materials items be locked so employees cannot change the component list? Yeah, that would be a standard Sage function. So I actually, uh, that would be my answer on that one is that uh, if, if that is the way uh, production management is set up in Sage, we would follow that as well. It's not something that, that we would uh, adjust or modify or anything like that. We're simply just automating these transactions. I hope that answers that. If it doesn't, if anybody could elaborate on that one, uh, I can try to answer that in more detail if you need to. Okay, is this compliant with 2020, 2022 PU1? Yes, we are up to date on all those. For real-time posting, you said these can be automatic? Yes, yeah, so that would be as soon as you push that data back over to your Sage system, we automatically post those, so that becomes completely real-time. And that carries through our WMS solutions as well. 
Um, but yes, that, that definitely applies here in manufacturing. Can labor management be utilized for directed picking, replenishments, et cetera? Can labor man can you read that again, Darcy? Can labor management be utilized for directed picking, replenishments, et cetera? I'm not sure I understand how labor tracking uh, applies into that. Um, our labor tracking management console here is simply just the labor transactions that are being captured for production management are all populated here. So you can manage these prior to pushing them over to your Sage system. We do think, uh, have things like, uh, you know, it's a different webinar I can show you guys uh, at a different time, but there is the ability to waive or group multiple orders together that does check fill rate to see if you have the ability to go ahead and fulfill orders. Um, and then with the multi bin side of things, it can tie into a true directed picking um, based on allocation rules and, and, and et cetera. So I, if I'm missing the mark on that, whoever's asking that, please reach out to us as far as you can email info at scanforce.com or steve at scanforce.com. Uh, and, and I can try to answer that in more detail, but I'm, I'm not entirely sure how the labor management console ties into the order picking. All right, we've got three more coming in. Um, I don't know if you wanna keep this going or um uh, yeah i'm good until we don't have any other questions okay all right let's go can you add user defined fields on the scanners so that they can be added absolutely but but we need to be the ones to add those those are very minor changes it's not a big programming project or anything but yeah we do that all the time you know if any of you have talked to me any other times you would have heard me say this probably a bunch the solutions are designed to be as plug and play as possible but no two companies operate identical so yeah we have to do things like add udfs um, lock certain prompts, only display this, do that. And, and we're, you know, back to one of the things I mentioned in one of the earlier slides, we're extremely agile and being able to do those things. We can do them quickly. And if there's sport issues or whatever else, and if that comes up on the fly, we're, we're pretty quick to be able to do those types of modifications. Okay, great. Um, so for the automatic posting for work ticket and labor entries, is that a default Sage setting or a scan for specific setting? That is a scan force. It's related to the transactions being created by scan force. So it's a scan force setting. Okay. I don't, I think we don't have any more that are not um, similar to previous ones. So I think we've uh, covered them all. Well, great. Uh, Darcy, thanks for your help on that one. And thanks to everybody that's still on. I uh, appreciate it. If you need any additional information, want to see a one on one demo, ask any more detailed questions. Give us a call, email us. Um, let me actually do that here. Hold on one second. Let's go to, for anybody that's still on here, let's go ahead and pull up. Whoops, there's our, our contact information. So again, I have the info email up there, but if somebody needs to email me directly, it's just steve at scanforce.com. There's our phone number. Uh, reach out to us if you guys have any other questions. All right, thanks everybody.